Northern Ireland has a troubled history. For 30 years, Loyalists, mainly Protestants, fought to keep Northern Ireland in the United Kingdom. Be warned, we're the young moderns coming through the UDA ranks and we have risen. Republicans, mainly Catholics, fought for a united Ireland. Nearly 4,000 people were killed. In 1998, the Good Friday Peace Agreement was signed, and what is known as the Troubles came to an end. This agreement proves that democracy works. The border between North and South became invisible, and military checkpoints disappeared. Then in 2016, the British people shocked just about everyone and voted to leave the European Union. In our history as our Independence Day. Now the decision has been made to leave, we need to find the best way. As the UK and EU figure out how to finalize that divorce, what to do with Northern Ireland becomes one of their most pressing problems. Nobody wants to return to the borders of the past. Uh, what we do want to do is to find a way through this. If they ever vote to have a unified island? I would say no. They keep us British. If any occupying force occupies a country, the indigenous people don't have a right to resist that. Would you tell somebody to come at a certain time that we're going to shoot you? Some people want to keep the conflict going. The dissident Republican paramilitaries, well, they, they're constantly looking for opportunities to attack and murder police officers. This is very weird, it's 2018. Bombs in Belfast. I'm Imran Garda, and I've come to Northern Ireland to see how Brexit could reignite a bitter conflict. I was born in 1972. I'm what's known as a Troubles baby. 1972 was the worst year of this conflict. In 1972, there was over 2,000 bombs set off here. Was that six or seven bombs a day for a full year? Yeah. 1969 is officially when the Troubles started here in Belfast, and we're going to go to the neighbourhood where it started. For 30 years, Northern Ireland was at war. For some, the roots of the conflict go back 300 years. But for most, Northern Ireland's modern conflict began in 1922, when Ireland declared independence from Great Britain. Ireland was divided into two parts, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, a province that remained a part of the UK. By the late 1960s, Northern Ireland was tearing apart. The Catholic minority, victims of legal and economic discrimination, demanded equal rights and unification with the Republic of Ireland. Against them stood the Protestant majority of Unionists and Loyalists who identified as British and wanted to remain a part of the United Kingdom. Over time, both sides turned to paramilitary groups and terrorist tactics, killing thousands of innocent civilians. For Catholic Republicans, the main paramilitary force was the IRA. For Loyalists, there were a number of groups like the UVF, UDA and UFF. Here in the north, it's not about religion, it's about identity. It's about being British or Irish. Guys, we're on the Shankill Road now. This neighborhood would be the heart of loyalism in Belfast. No Catholics live here. Never have, probably never will. There won't be any Irish music. There won't be any Irish dancing. People here are British and are very proud of the fact that they are British. So, 
I would hazard a guess that most people around here want Brexit because the people here want to remain with Great Britain. It's no surprise that a majority of Protestants in Northern Ireland voted to leave the EU. Everywhere in this part of Belfast there are flags marking out loyalist territories. After 20 years of peace, communities here are still celebrating their paramilitaries. Straight ahead of us in the distance is that famous peace wall which divides the two neighbourhoods. So everything from here over to my right is British and Protestant. Yeah. Everything to my left on the other side of this wall is Irish and Catholic. So in many ways it's a border between Britain and Ireland, these walls. It's a separation of two neighbourhoods, two identities, two nationalities in this little part of Belfast. Is there something that people don't get about these walls? This is only one of around 45 peace walls in Belfast. This is the largest, the oldest and the longest, but there are other walls. And there's actually a wall that's in Belfast which you can't see with your naked eye. It's in a cemetery, separating Catholics and Protestants, even in death. You're on the Irish side. So when we're on Bombay Street and this neighborhood, Clonard, it's basically what we call ground zero of the Troubles of Belfast. This is where it all kicked off and it just exploded from here. Across the road there, first thing that you notice coming into the street were those photographs. And they're all photographs of members of the IRA from this neighbourhood, from Clonard, who have been killed on active duty. To those guys on the other side of the road, on the other side of the fence, these are terrorists. These are terrorists. And to the people here... These are heroes, these are soldiers, they're men who have fought for their country for independence. In 2016, the majority of people in Northern Ireland voted against leaving the European Union. But their vote wasn't enough. As the UK leaves the EU in just a few months, it will take Northern Ireland with it. For Sinn Féin, Northern Ireland's main Republican party, Brexit means opportunity. If Irish people want out of the divorce, they better unite. The only Brexit we want to see is British withdrawal from Ireland. Our ultimate political goal is reunification of our country. We're constantly being told it's not the right time. It's 102 years since 1916. When will the time be right? Because what we've had is a, 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 an artificial statelet here in the north which hasn't worked economically, socially or any other way. Sinn Féin was the political wing of the provisional IRA. During the Troubles, the IRA prominently fought for freedom from British rule. They saw the British as oppressors of the Republican population. They intimidated, planted bombs and targeted security posts, killing 656 British soldiers and more than 1,000 civilians. Whether they're professional criminals carrying firearms or political terrorists, we say this. You will find in the new Conservative government a remorseless and implacable opponent. But on Good Friday, they agreed to end the killings in exchange for a seat at the table. The north and south border, once marked by military checkpoints, was finally dissolved. For Sinn Féin, this was a historic moment. In 1969 onwards, you had a British military presence. We had a heavy, heavily militarised border. Now, there used to be customs posts just along here. Right. Um, we had barriers and cars were stopped and buses were searched and all of that. And people, there was no freedom of travel in that sense. Where we're here now, there's about 255 crossings. But the border could be a river meandering uh, oh. through a field. Um, it, it could be just a fence. Um, as you can see, there's no physical presence of a border here, and that's the way it should be. According to international law, we went from the Republic of Ireland into the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Well, we're in what I consider occupied Ireland now. Ah. Occupied by whom? The British. Nobody wants to return to the border of the past, but that could change once the UK leaves the EU. 
interim plans for Northern Ireland, called the backstop, seem to kick the can of responsibility down the road for future leaders to sort out. Hardline Brexiteers have said they may put a hard border right here. This is a Republican monument. There were four IRA volunteers killed here. These were young men, freedom fighters, who were prepared to um, give the supreme sacrifice. So they were going to lay a landmine at the border? At a customs post. We think about that and we think of a border coming back. It's all the echoes of the past, yeah, right? absolutely. Customs posts were targets? Yes, absolutely. Because they were seen as symbols of what? They were seen as symbols of partition, obviously, and symbols of British oppression. On the mainland in the UK, and among many unionists, they would consider these people terrorists. You wanted to blow, well, blow up soldiers and blow up a that's the, that's the old adage, uh, one man's freedom fighters and another man's terrorists. I had members of my family who were murdered by the IRA, a terrorist organization. I joined the army. I was involved in trying to counter the terrorist threat against my people. And I recognized that we're not going to resolve our problems through security measures alone. Um, that politics was the way to address them. And that's what I've sought to do ever since. Until their unity government collapsed last year, Sinn Féin shared power with a political party on the unionist side of the aisle, the Democratic Unionist Party, or DUP. For those that say that sectarianism still hangs heavily over Northern Ireland, your response would be what? We still do have divisions here, um, but um, I think they're less about sectarian issues and more about the question of where is the future of this country? Do we want to remain part of the United Kingdom or be part of a united Ireland? While the majority in Northern Ireland opposed Brexit, the DUP did not. The party, which identifies as British, campaigned heavily on a hard Brexit. Their 10 MPs hold UK Prime Minister Theresa May in power. Their partnership was secured by the DUP promising to support May if she ensured £1 billion went their way in Stormont, the seat of government in Northern Ireland. We believe that the United Kingdom would be better off out of the European Union and I don't want to see arrangements under Brexit that separate us from the rest of the UK. If there ever is a land border, does that mean that Brexit is not really true Brexit? Well, the land border exists. It's not a question of creating it. We have a different currency in Northern Ireland from the Irish Republic. We have different tax laws, different fiscal regimes. The Irish Republic's part of the Eurozone. The um, Northern Ireland's part of the Sterling Zone. I didn't have a checkpoint when I, when I drove no, through. No, indeed. Right. Yeah. And uh, we don't want uh, mm -hmm. there uh, to be checkpoints. In this day and age, if you want to check on the movement of goods, you can do it using all kinds of modern technology. Uh, you don't have to have a man standing on the border physically um, stopping a truck and checking the contents to know what's inside. To achieve long-term stability, we need both peace and prosperity. And I believe the right kind of Brexit can help us to deliver that. The wrong kind of Brexit might mean it's more difficult. Throughout Irish history, Republicans have seen the police in Northern Ireland as an occupying force. British troops may have left, the police still has to be prepared for frequent paramilitary attacks. In recent years, dissident Republican groups have stepped up their armed campaign against them. A police officer's lot in Northern Ireland doesn't finish when he takes the uniform off at the end of the evening. It actually carries on whenever they go home at night and whenever they're with their family and doing the normal social activities that everybody would do. Hard border or soft border, the fact that there is at the very least, a psychological barrier between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland that's going to be entrenched again after Brexit. Does that cook up anxieties and fears? Whatever government agency, whether it be National Crime Agency, uh, Revenue and Customs Border Force, when they start working in a border area, they will need an element of protection. That protection can only come from the police in, in Northern Ireland. So what we see then is uh, the opportunity then arising for terrorists who are still fairly active in that area uh, to attack uh, police officers and murder police officers or other agents of the state. Who are the new IRA? The new IRA are, are just a, a group of uh, people who have broken away from uh, traditional Republican groupings. Uh, they refuse to accept peace. 
uh, and they're still determined to drive uh, a British state out of Northern Ireland using violent and terrorist means. In this Catholic neighbourhood of Belfast, you look at some of the signs and the murals, you'd be forgiven for thinking that they come from the time of the trouble. That's not the reality. The reality is they're new. And the message is we don't trust the authorities. We are the authorities. We're in charge here and we get to meet our justice. Dissident Republicans reject British rule. They want to turn their neighbourhoods into no-go areas for the police. They also impose their own form of neighborhood justice, known as punishment attacks, for alleged anti-social behaviors like drug use. Andrew Allen was shot dead in 2012. He was 24. I've come to Derry to talk to his mother, Donna. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm Donna. Imran. Nice Thanks to see you come in. Inviting me into your home. On the top. They shot him, they murdered him. His partner was there with him, you know, and she said he was dead for some months. They said he was a drug dealer. It was a group called RAD. Would you label them a paramilitary? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah they're paramilitary. So a Republican paramilitary. Yeah. They think they're fighting for a cause. They probably are in their own mind fighting for a cause, but not what they're doing to the young people in the town. You know, that has got nothing to do with the cause. Why do they have so much power? Do they own the streets? A lot of people are afraid, you know, of their actions if maybe they don't support them or oh. if you have a row with someone in that organisation, the next thing you know, you're getting shot. Paramilitary-style punishment attacks have been around Northern Ireland since the Troubles began, but in the past few years, they've doubled. During the Troubles, paramilitary groups on both sides used punishment attacks within their own communities to control and intimidate people. There were beatings and shootings through the kneecaps, ankles and elbows. These guys who killed Andrew, would they be recruiting their members from amongst the kids who grow up around here? Yes, they would. They would. And are they like feeding them political ideology? Are they telling them we're gonna like oh have yes, Ireland? certainly. What do the kids get out of it besides like the joyride? Do they get money? Do they get? I don't know what they get, but you know, sometimes some of them have got themselves and they bother. And if you do this for us, or if you join us, you'll be okay. Still in certain areas, if you, you know, you'd be a bit hesitant of going to the cops. There was one mother, she was told to bring her son to be shot. And the woman was terrified, but she didn't know what to do, you see. It's a case of, do I take him for them to shoot him, maybe in the ankle or the knees? And if I don't, they could come and shoot him and maybe kill him. Just around here, this is a, the football stadium up here. And it's just over here where, just around this area here where the last guy was shot. Was this by appointment or? No, no, they, they went down to his house. So they did, and they shot him. Republican paramilitaries often issue community members threats as a warning, but the threats themselves can be devastating. I'm meeting one young man who says he was threatened by Republican paramilitaries six months ago. He now lives in a safe house. I was in trouble with dangerous people. I owed money too. I had drugs off them. I think they were past the paramilitaries. They said to a family member, if I don't pay the money back, 
they're going to try and find me and come after me and shoot me. Are the drug dealers the paramilitaries or are the drug dealers working with the paramilitaries? They're trying to say over here that it's run by power noises. Is it? It could be. Again, they're, they're not walking by, not walking by with a badge on their shoulder, but I believe drug dealing run by power noises. They're taking the money, supplying the drugs, but then they're shooting the people for dealing the drugs to, to prove that it's not us. I actually tried to commit suicide to, to get away from it because I thought once I'm dead that they can't come after me. It's how they administer justice, it's how they can increase their hold on local communities, it's how they prey on people, it's also how, in some people's eyes, they, they get credence. When we see that 56% of those in Northern Ireland voted against Brexit, yet, of course, because you're a part of the UK, you're breaking away from Europe. Does it give these paramilitaries a bit more of a reason to exist? Any change in, in the constitutional position uh, presents an opportunity for paramilitaries to, to fill the vacuum. Paramilitary groupings will look to create uh, opportunities where they see difficulties between uh, Europe and the UK or the Irish Republic and the UK. The Good Friday Agreement brought stability. But for dissident Republicans, Sinn Féin's political concessions were a betrayal. Paki and Brian are part of Seru. It's a political party determined to carry on the fight for a united island. I met them on the road and they took me to an undisclosed location. The authorities would be keeping a close eye on you guys in terms of the British authorities, PSNI, MI5 and so on, because they see you as a remnant of something that they thought they sorted out. They thought they sorted us out by um, imprisoning us and by uh, killing our, our family members and our, our neighbours, but they didn't. And so, so long as the country is divided and so long as British rule is maintained in Ireland by force of arms, it's al always going to be resisted. They're not wanted in this country. So is it justifiable to attack them? If any occupying force occupies a country um, by force and uses that force against indigenous people, those people have a right to resist that um, occupation and with force if necessary. MI5 believes that you are the political wing of the new IRA. Is that true? Well, we're today speaking to you on behalf of Cyril, which is um, a revolutionary um, socialist republican organization mm -hmm. we're very clear on that these punishment attacks from my perspective it looks like vigilante justice and i'm interested to hear your guys opinion on this when you have a large number of people who are of the mindset that the state is illegitimate and that the state has no writ in their areas then there becomes a vacuum you have levels of um, of basically community justice that takes place and that manifests itself in beatings and shootings of people who have been engaged in what is deemed to be anti-community behaviour. So, when you say community justice, would we then be accurate in assuming that it's endorsed by the community? When the state doesn't help people there, and when they don't police or can't police or won't police those areas, then people will turn to other people for support and help. It's my last night in Belfast, and I've been invited to watch a football game between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, the first in seven years. I'm meeting up with Tommy and Dee, two loyalist fans who say they would never watch a game at a pub in a Republican neighborhood. Does it feel like you're playing another country tonight? Yes. Of course it's in our country. It is in our country. It's it not is in our country. It is in our country. <laughs> because there are people on, in other parts of this city who would say it's the same people playing each other. In no, I know, I know what you mean. It's two yeah. different countries. It's a small minority of people in the north. That it's the same thing ones want the all iron. If there ever goes an all iron, there'll be a civil war. Would you fight? Yes. I'm 60 years of age, yes, I would fight. They keep us British. 
Can I ask you specifically whether you voted to leave Europe or stay in Europe? Leave. Or no. Got ones coming over here from different countries. They're not bringing anything to this country. They're coming here and they're sponging. Don't want them. So was it? Was that the reason? Immigration. Yeah, it's immigration. Yeah. You're getting all these, honestly, Muslims. Mm -hmm. Who want to take over the world? I didn't see any evidence of that here in Belfast. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. So you want to stop it yeah. before it comes? It seems as if there's a lot of unresolved stuff here. Oh, there's loads of unresolved, unresolved stuff. Good evening. Sorry. Are you at liberty to tell us what's going on here? No, sorry, no yeah. comment. Thank you. This is the is this the bomb disposal unit? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's pretty strange. We're filming in the bar next door, watching the game. We saw a bunch of cop cars come over here. They went in. It seemed like a raid. We weren't sure if it was a drug bust or something else. This I can confirm is the bomb disposal unit of Belfast. They won't talk to me, as you heard. This is very weird, it's 2018. Bombs in Belfast. <laughs>